All right, welcome to UFC 227. This is Combat Sports Talk. My name is Ryan Smith, and I am here with our pay-per-view crew. Always, whenever we have a live event, we got Mr. G Money, George Stallworth. How are you tonight, sir? Doing fine, man. Doing fine. Enjoying these fights. Awesome, awesome. But we also have our co-host from the podcast, Casey Onyebuchi. What's up? Howdy. Yeah, it's crazy, man. We got everybody here. The only person we don't have is John. He's supposed to be here tonight, but he bailed at the last minute. But that's okay. We got another fight getting ready to come up. This is uh, J.J. Aldrich versus uh, Pollyanna. Pollyanna. Viviana, that's right. Nailed it. There it is. So, so we want to go back and talk about that first fight, though. That first fight, oh my goodness, introduced Kevin Holland, the Kevin Trailblazer. Trailblazer, huh? Yes, that's right, the Trailblazer to the UFC. He was facing off against Tiago Mejeta Santos. Kevin is local talent. He's here out of Fort Worth. Yep. I think he fights out of Phalanx Gym over in Fort Worth. Duran Lamb is his coach. Okay. Also, he's a Travis Luter brown belt, if I'm not mistaken. All right. I've seen him fight once, man. He he's 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 a pretty pretty get pretty good fighter, man. He's today was impressive for that to be his, uh, his UFC debut? debut. Oh my gosh! I, I've, he showed some heart. The fight that I, I saw him in, man, literally, he was leaning over the cage, talking to the referees and the judges about what they were going to go do later on. Why he's some beating? To him. Yeah, he's, like, I, I dig that. It's, it's going to be a hot ticket swagger. in the future, man. Yeah. Well, absolutely. I mean, he was in a lot of bad situations during this fight, but he found a way to minimize the damage, to give himself an opportunity, and even throw back some pretty exciting different types of strikes. It was amazing. Dude, on the bottom, he was throwing elbows like he was comfortable with it. Like, yep. this is where I want to be. You're the one in a, in a bad situation. Definitely a dangerous dude. I can't wait to see... Uh Maybe, maybe not have Tiago as your first <laughs> as your first entry to the UFC. A 14th, like. <laughs> what? Tiago's ranked 14th? 13th. 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 Yeah. Right Lucky out the gate. 13th for him. Because, golly, that was dangerous. Absolutely. And, and the thing is, is that it was a late fight replacement as well. Yeah. So to come in there, you know, with without a lot of time to fully prepare and to do what he did, I, I'm, I'm truly impressed by, by, by the Trailblazer. All right, so let's look at this next fight. We got J.J. Aldrich. I haven't seen her fight, but just by her picture, I was not impressed. I'm not impressed by her pictures. I don't remember who I've seen her fight before. She takes a lot of damage. And if I'm not mistaken, Pollyanna is uh, a pretty decent striker. I'm definitely going to go with Pollyanna on this one. Absolutely. I got Pollyanna as well. The, uh, the, the, the highlights that they were showing were just pretty devastating. Like she's... She's got a lot of things she brings to the uh, to the octagon. Mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken, I think uh, JJ is Irish. If I'm not mistaken. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There's the contribution by KC on Yebuchi. So I bring up the Irish though, just to comment on our good friend Conor McGregor. There it is. So we're definitely going to be talking about the upcoming Conor and Khabib fight taking place October 6th in Vegas. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. And her, her actual name is Pollyanna Viana. Wow, okay. Ryan, I think we might have to um, start to relive your, your theory on fighters. Absolutely. Well, got you know, a Brazilian walking to the cage. Got a Brazilian walking to the cage. This fight is in Los Angeles, though. That's close enough to Brazil. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go ahead and say, we we we're gonna we're gonna call this Brazil tonight. And uh, I got I got Pollyanna on in this. I think this fight's gonna go just this first round. I think we're gonna see a finish. I'm really interested in seeing her striking. What, what her striking looks like. All right. Well. Those are our pick. You got it. Did you pick? Uh, I picked these. All right. So KC chose not to pick. So we're going to go ahead. We'll be back right after this fight. All right. We are back. The results are in. JJ Aldrich wins by unanimous decision. 
Did you see that coming? I did not see that coming. I really thought Pollyanna was going to um, bring it home tonight. I absolutely saw that coming. <laughs> I think right before the fight began. So still maintain the Nostradamus of MMA. Un- unfortunately, we did not capture that. That the your picks are like Sasquatch. It's elusive. You can't record it. So and much like you making wait for our fight. We ain't fighting. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I was pretty disappointed by what uh, Pollyanna Viana did in the ring. I was expecting her, as a uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu champion, I was expecting her to be able to take this fight to the ground, you know, impose her will on this fight, and finish this thing early. You know, from the highlights I saw, I I thought her striking was going to be a lot better. The biggest thing I noticed is is that she did not keep her hands up at all. There was no guard, no defense, no anything. She was just constantly eating shots from JJ. Absolutely, I, you know, it was it was it was shocking to see how JJ Aldrich was able to land big shots to the face yeah. at will. I mean, there there was nothing, no head movement, no no hands up, anything. It was amateur striking out there. It's amateur night. You know, granted though, I just saw Pat in her corner, so I'm guessing. Maybe she's training with Thug Rose. Thug Rose. I wouldn't she, be surprised if that, you know, if that's level JJ up. Well, you know, that that, that could be. You know, with with Rose Namajunas and the work that she's been able to do, have you really seen her grow to be able to dominate someone like Joanna Young Jacek, who's one of my personal favorite fighters? Um, if 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 they have a secret, if they have a system that 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 they're able to teach other fighters, we're going to be seeing a lot of great things coming out of the fight camps in Colorado. It wouldn't surprise me. Um, Rose just says if she keep keep Pat off the liquor, everything will be fine. <laughs> but speaking of the other side of the co- coin with Rose, Joanna, did you see her performance last week? I did. You know, and and you know, I am I am biased. I am a big jo- uh, Joanna J. Chick Homer. So you know, I thought she did an amazing job. But the fact is, is that Tisha Torres was half her size. She was tiny. Tisha Torres is tiny compared to Joanna J. Chick. I'm going to have to go back and rewatch that. You go that. back and watch that. Joanna Jacek stood at least a full head o- taller than, than Tisha Torres. Joanna's kind of skinny. She is skinny, but, yeah, Torres is thick, but she's real small. So once the fight, I mean, she really tried to push Joanna Jacek up against the cage, tried to grapple her, uh, grapple her kind of like Randy Couture style. But by the time we got to the third round, Joanna Jacek had gotten her distance, started teeing off, and it was just an acad- it was just it was just academic at that point. Speaking of last week's car, I hadn't had a chance to really talk with you about it. Did you see the emotional outburst from Jose Aldo? Oh my goodness! You I, know, I was happy to see him win. You know, the thing is, and, and this is this was the dispute that I had with KC over here is the fact that I had picked Jeremy Stevens and he had picked Jose Aldo. I personally thought that Jose Aldo, after having lost twice to Max Holloway, that we had seen the better days of, of Jose Aldo. I mean, we thought I thought it was over. I didn't think that it was all that much of an impressive performance. I mean, he landed the shot that he needed, absolutely. But I, would, I can't say I, I, I just felt that was Jose Aldo of old. Well, it, it wasn't because if, if it was... You know, we would have seen someone who would have heavily leveraged the leg kicks. Right. We would have seen someone who was dynamic and fast on, the, on you know, on the feet and, in, and and with his hands. But he's gotten older. Some people call this post Usada, Jose. Well, you know that post Usada auto. You know that's that's possible. Maybe that's why he was he's not able to uh, to do what he's been able to do in the past. But what I can say is that body shot landed like like. Pre Usada Jose Alves. <laughs> that body shot, I mean, he closed down. The body system shut down, and we're like, we're going we're gonna to have to reboot Control Alt Delete. That's one of those Control Alt Delete punches. So, coming up, the next fight here is uh, Cub Swanson and Hinato Moicano. Moicano. Yeah. How's it pronounced? Moicano. Moicano. I, I like Cubs. I, 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 I ride or die with Cub Swanson. So, whether or not I mean he's fighting T City Ortega, whether or not he's fighting Frankie Edgar, I'm going with I'm going with Cub Swanson, so I'm not going to change now. I'm, Cub Swanson's my dude. I'm loving the the mustache that Cub is rocking, so I'm rolling with Cub. All right. Well, KC has decided to talk to other people in the audience, so we may not be able to get a pick from him. But you know what's going to happen. 
we're not going to get a pick from him. The fight's going to resolve, and then he's going to tell us that he picked the winner. Absolutely. KC, who are you picking? Can we get a prediction on this fight, sir? (laughs) (laughs) Once again, he picked J.J. Aldrich. For the Cubs, Swanson, Moicano fight. Remaining consistent. <laughs> <laughs> In my defense, I didn't even know who was fighting. <laughs> so, Wait, so who's it's Cubs, Swanson, and Renato Moicano. Moicano is like almost undefeated. I think he's like nine and one. Or where's? They're, they're going with the Brazilian on those. All well, right, the Kate. Brazilian lost on the last one. I know. Yeah, but she. <laughs> <laughs> She, she had got it. Worked. She got beat. She was defiled in public. It was horrible. She had this defensive uh, strategy called hands down. <laughs> yeah. All right. So those are the picks for the night. We're going to come back right after these results. I'm going with Cub. All right. That against you, partner. All right. We have the results. Hinato Muicano defeated Cub Swanson. By rear naked choke in the first round. I want to incidentally say, before the fight started, after we stopped the recording, KC came back and said, I know I, I want to change prove it. to Cub Swanson. Show me the tape. <laughs> I did hear that. Show me the tape. All I know His first is selection there is no tape of this happening. Was D's, and then he changed D's. it to. Yeah. Yeah, D's for D's Moicano. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard that? It's a sign of respect. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, I, I will be sure to respect you in the future. <laughs> All right. So you know this was a this was an interesting fight because Cub Swanson had to get inside. It was much longer. Uh, Moicano was, had a lot of reach. Cub you know. was definitely in control of that fight. And then that jab shut him down. I don't. It set him down on his butt. Yeah, so he caught it right in the face, like right in the forehead. He went down. Moicano went in, got mount right off the bat. Cub was able to wrestle a little bit, but it was a rear naked choke was the finish. So I, 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 the choke, there was a transition in the choke because it originally it started out as a crank. Right. And that didn't sink in, and right. then he switched it and he got, got it under the neck. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, then after that, what do you think about the in-ring antics of uh, Moicano where he was showing respect and then showing respect and, and showing more respect? I definitely agree with showing respect to your opponent, especially when you beat somebody as game as Cub Swanson. Cub is the number five uh, ranked guy in that division. I think we spoke about it earlier. He's a journeyman. Like Beating him really elevates Hinato's status. I think you do owe him some. Cubs been in that division killing it for years. They talked about his stats at the beginning. He's got, like, the most wins in the UFC and WEC history. He's got, like, 15 wins. Um, I'm still in shock, though, behind that fight. I, I, I didn't see it coming. I did not see that coming. I, I didn't see it coming. So, you got something and to say? You, I do. KC saw it coming, did he? I'm like the Nostradamus of MMA, basically. He's really trying to brand that. I just want to go back and say I heard him say – I want to change my pick. I'm going with Cub Swanson. Run the tape back. (laughs) No, but seriously, though, there was something about the way that uh, Moicano showed respect at the end. Like, initially, it's too much for me, but for all of the things that happened in the ring, I would much rather that be your default. It's like, oh, my gosh, I want to show nonstop respect to the point that it's uncomfortable versus the more, like, WWE and chicks that we've been seeing more and more. So, like, that's a that's a guy I can get behind where it's like, all right, he's a little too friendly, but give me that over a Connor style or a Brock Lesnar jumping in and throwing a chair it, it, kind of thing. It didn't anyway. remind you of, like, Yoel Romero kissing Luke Rocco in the oh, mouth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but, but – I, I love you. I love you. Don't forget Jesus. Don't forget Jesus. I love you. I love you, man. <laughs> so now we're look, we're looking at a, we're looking at a highlight of Greg Hardy, who's now coming to the UFC. He looking a little he looking a little thick. Man, he is you know not what I would call he's looking he's looking in Ryan shape, not KC shape. I don't know if you guys if you both had a chance to watch any of the Contender series, a bit, yeah. but a lot of these guys are coming out of there and making their debuts in the UFC now, and like it's some good talent, man. It's I think the, con- the Contender Series 
definitely should replace the Tough Series. Yes. Oh, 100%. Uh, much love to Ian Henchman out of Factory X, who just won his last fight in the Contender Series and got his contract. We got a, He's officially on the site now. Pictures up. We've had a lot of local Dallas guys, um, or DFW yep. guys, recently um, do, doing the Contender Series and winding over contracts. Well, you know, oh. that was uh, Holland. Uh, Kevin, was it Kevin Holland? Kevin Holland came out of the came Contender out of the Series. Contender series. And he actually didn't get a contract. Off his off of his fight with the contender series. Really? Got another guy. Um, this kid here. In, I can't pronounce his name. He's he's Nigerian. Kennedy. Yeah, How do you Kennedy. say that, Casey? He's out of Dallas. Because well, I'm Nigerian. Because you're Nigerian, you need to tell me. Wow, this got racial real it. quick, didn't it? <laughs> right? Kennedy's out of Dallas. It's like a couple of other guys recently here out of Dallas. Got high level enough. talent, and they're making their way to the UFC. It's good to see it, man. This is a great time to be in the MMA community here in Dallas. All right, the next fight coming up is my guy, Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson, the number one pound-for-pound pound fighter in the world. Can we get KC's pick right out the gate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Fair I want enough. to make sure. All right, so my pick is Henry Cejudo for the win in three. And when but, I'm correct, Ryan has to lose by what? 30 pounds by 229. No, I can't do 30, 30 pounds by 229. 10 pounds by 229. I could do that. Okay. But if KC... No, it's agreed. If, if, Demetrius, if Demetrius Johnson wins, though, KC has to get Mighty Mouse tattooed on his body. <laughs> like the cartoon character or the words? The cartoon character. That could be a nice tattoo if you really think about it. Uh, of all the dumb tattoos I have, I can't do that. See that this I is regret like this, real. This is, I, <laughs> since you've been practicing jujitsu, now you can actually take the Mighty Mouse move and tat that on your. That would that would be fire. Okay, so you're gonna get a tattoo of the Mighty Mouse. Wait, how is that equivalent? You only have to lose ten pounds. <laughs> I gotta find something to put on. Listen, it's only if if Demetrius Johnson loses. I gotta do something. If he wins, it's nothing. No, we can't. That's not a bet. All right. If he wins, you gotta gain ten pounds. Deal. Done. So, all right. So I gotta lose ten pounds by two twenty nine. You gotta gain ten pounds by two twenty nine. What, what are the consequences if this doesn't happen? I don't know. It's pride. Honor? I'm just gonna. I, yeah, I'm gonna dishonor you. Oh. Well, you shame my family. For this, you must pay. <laughs> we will go out and we will settle this like two men. <laughs> the funny thing is, I love his radio. We're, <laughs> we're doing, we're doing the lips, the bad dub lips, but you can't see it because this is all audio. This <laughs> is so just like comment, blank space. <laughs> A lot of dead air, huh? All right, well. It's no so, secret. I have Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. Who do you have? I'm picking DJ as well. There's a lot of hype, though, about Cejudo right now. They're, they're saying that his striking has definitely elevated since their last fight two years ago. But DJ said, I'm shutting all that talk down because my striking, are, he said, my entire game has elevated over these past two years. And he's correct. But DJ hasn't fought in, what, 10 months? Maybe even longer. He's he's coming off an injury, a surgery. So I wonder know. if ring rust rust will be a factor. If if ever there is a risk, there it is. Pounds on the line. A lot of people are picking Cejudo to win this fight. Yeah, but a lot of people are wrong. Cejudo, por supuesto. The Aztec, the messenger, is coming to the ring. All right, we have all our picks. All we got to do now is watch KC. I do have no another question for KC. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. He picked Cejudo to win third round, but he didn't say by what. Is this a submission? Is he oh, gonna, no, Connor's going to throw. Um, Connor. Connor. <laughs> yeah, Connor's going to jump into this. <laughs> and he's going to throw a dolly Look, so that he I doesn't just... have to fight Khabib. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how we get the win. Uh, listen. <laughs> all right. You just never know. Okay. We're in the WWE world. K K KC has made his pick. He's picked Henry Cejudo. We got 10 pounds on the line. 
This is uh Wait, but my ten pounds starts at two thirty. Wait, no, you said you were two forty. You, were you around. told oh, no, that no. dude you were two forty. Because it sounded better. <laughs> oh no. I'm in the middle, I'm two thirty three. No. No, we're gonna to 250, man. That's on that's 200. Untenable. You gotta be 250 by 239. That is untenable. There it is. Nice. So, Mr. Tom Rios, the uh, the the Renaissance man here, has uh, fixed our on-air light. <laughs> there you go. Wow, that is bright. All right, we have our picks. We're gonna we're gonna sign off, and we'll let you know after the results. I need to go look at these judges. All right. So we are back. <laughs> Why so dejected? Demetrius I would, Johnson. Look, he even put the belt on upside down. That That's how in shock Dana was. Demetrius Johnson won, lost by split decision. <laughs> All right. So we, we stopped because we wanted to listen to the post-fight comments. But to, to repeat... Mighty Mouse Johnson was defeated tonight by split decision against Henry Cejudo. And now, so Henry Cejudo is the new flyweight champion of the UFC. Mighty Mouse was not defeated. He was robbed. Oh, you are correct. This was not robbed you, by you, Sal D'Amato. You got to beat the champion, not take the champion down, and lay on him for a minute and went around. Two of those judges. We've never seen... Mighty yeah. Mouse in such deep trouble. Two of those judges gave Cejudo three rounds. It's yeah. true. I don't what know what three rounds. Fight what? were they watching? The second, the fourth, and the fifth. Come on. Second, fourth, two, four, five. That is that is ridiculous. Ridiculous. This is this is. I'm I'm so disappointed for Mighty Mouse. This was a robbery. This was. I did not see Demetrius Johnson get beat tonight. But you know what? What do the UFC always say? Never leave the fight in the hands, hands of, of the, the judges. judges. Well, I, I do. There's the saving grace. KC mentioned it earlier. This creates a different dynamic in their division now. It shakes things up. One, whether or not he's going to get an automatic uh, rematch. Yep. Which he should. You don't win the title and defend it 11 times and not get a rematch. There is not another person who deserves a title shot more at this point than Demetrius Johnson. You just can't do it. They gave The UFC the has right. set Come the on. precedent before, though. Yeah. TJ Dillashaw did not get an instant rematch. Sure. Yes, but Cody, Cody Garbrandt did. And he never defended. He never defended. So it's, 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 it's just bizarre. Like, you know, it's bizarre that, that Demetrius Johnson lost, but it's... If they do not give an immediate rematch, they gave Joanna Young Jacek a rematch against Rose Namajunas. Immediately. This has, the next fight has to be Demetrius Johnson versus Cejudo 3. That's the fight that needs to happen. The problem is. I think. Go ahead. The problem is, Henry Cejudo tonight just called out the winner of TJ Dillashaw and Cody Garbrandt. Set the stage. A so, dude who won the title by split decision. Just Call called out. out the winner of the bantamweight division, and he has—he has even held the belt for for a ten minutes. Not even. But that's how it's done. Let's not act like this is brand new territory. It's just like done. It's about making money. So this goes back to the question I asked earlier. Yep. Is this becoming more and more WWE like? One hundred percent. Because that wasn't like. about sportsmanship. That was about the next paycheck and creating a bigger spectacle. Like, it wasn't about sports at all. Yeah, and, 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 and this is what causes me to, you know, to enjoy, not not to enjoy this, this sport as much. Because this isn't about who's the best at a division. How do I work my way up into a division, earn a title shot, win a title shot, and defend that belt that I just won? So, can I call Ryan out real quick? Because Ryan, for the last year, has given me so much grief. Because I'm a sports purist, and he likes the storyline, the drama. This is 100% storyline and drama. How do you not love this, Ryan? This is not storyline and drama because he's calling out another division. Storyline and drama would be him walking over to Demetrius Johnson and saying, I, I took the belt, and you're going to get another shot at this. If you don't win, go home. If he'd have done that, I would have been like, this is, a, this is awesome. 
But no, this is him looking at something that he doesn't deserve, that he hasn't earned, and he barely won this fight tonight on the judges' scorecards. We didn't see anything that just said that he should win this fight tonight. And, and you know, I think that anyone can admit that. He should go home, look himself in the mirror, and say, you know what, I am not, I should not feel like a champ. Yes, I have the belt, but I should not feel like a champ until I defeat Demetrius Johnson the way that I think I can. Well, so this fight also brings up another point that we often hear, especially fighters talk about. The scoring criteria in MMA. Yes. Because if you look, uh, like, how are these judges getting it so wrong? What? I'd really be interested to see what type of training they're giving to the judges in reference to that. Typically, like in Texas, I think they go through the same training that referees go through, which would say that you should have some intelligence about what you're seeing here. But very often, you also get judges who come out of boxing. And so they, they, MMA is scored much like boxing, yeah. other than the new unified rules. And I think that's something that it needs to be addressed and changed. But only the UFC is going to push the commissions to do something like that. So I, I got to wonder what DC thought of the fight, actually. like He was definitely pulling for Cejudo with the wrestling background. so You got to pull Cejudo's <laughs> wang out of DC's mouth to have him make a comment. Well, you know, it's... It's unfortunate because DC was very much touting every little thing that that Henry Cejudo did. And the fact is, is that a takedown should not be enough. If you were doing damage, if you were landing strikes, if you were passing guard, then we can start scoring points for that. But there were takedowns that he would just lay there but and we see was just immobilized. Offense? Did we see enough offense out of DJ? Let's just be putting it on the table. We've seen a lot better offense in the past. Like, what what damage did? What did who did Demetrius more damage to who in this fight? At the end of the fight, Cejudo was bruised up. Yeah, DJ bleeding. looked like he was ready for another fight. Yeah, Cejudo did not. So, but that's the thing, and 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 I think that this is what what make, what upsets me the most is that we are judging. You have to lose Demi- ten pounds. No, we are. <laughs> I don't have to lose ten pounds. You said it was going to happen in the third round. It, it went the distance. Let me. Okay. Actually, I heard something different there. We can play the tape back, though. It's on tape. It's on tape. <laughs> we can play this one back. The, the, so, here's the thing. is We are judging Demetrius Johnson on the fact that Demetrius Johnson did not do as much damage as he's done to other people. And not the fact that Henry Cejudo did damage, put Demetrius Johnson in dangerous positions, and finished the fight. He, that All Henry Cejudo did in this fight was survive and take down Demetrius Johnson twice. He did what a wrestler does. He controls you on the bottom. No offense, no submission attempts, and none of that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely disappointed. You know, I'm, I, I, I do have to say I respect DJ so much for in so much as he's done so what he did in the ring tonight to come up and, and, and be having his belt taken away from him. He still was a sportsman. He's still, Class act. you know, still respectful. Dana White is going to flip his lid in the post-fight interview. Like, he's going to have a lot to say about the, the scoring of the fight. If, if, if he that. doesn't, well, actually, if I was Dana, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Because this plays into the UFC's hands. Okay. This, this creates a storyline in the 125 division. Yeah. Like, honestly, if I was Dana, I wouldn't give DJ the immediate rematch. I would let Cejudo start building a legacy. I like that. I like that. Well, we will see. We'll keep our eye on the post-fight press conference and what comes out in the in the following days. But we have the main event coming up right now. Cody, no love. Garbrandt just ran to the ring. Was, he sprinted to the ring. He is ready for this yeah. fight against TJ Dillashaw. He's <laughs> Who are your picks? All right, let's talk about picks. I think Cody Garbrandt is a great fighter. He's super fast entertaining in the ring but i think tj dillashaw is still the uh the more technical strider striker and uh i got tj dillashaw i believe kill a shot casey let's get you on uh, on, record. on record right now on record i'm not picking d's. around <laughs> i'm picking d's uh cody garbrandt cody garbrandt by casey onyebuchi who you got my money's on tj but i must admit Cody does have knockout power, but I'm rolling with TJ on this one. All right, we got two T, we got two TJs. Who you got, Skyler? All right, 
<laughs> All so right. she needs to see the steps. All right. So, and, 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 and Mr. Tom, you going to pick some? All right, Mr. Tom Rios, the Renaissance man, picks Cody Garbrandt. No love. All right. Well, those are your picks. We will be back after these results. After these messages. All right, we have returned. It was a quick one. TJ Dillashaw defends his uh, bantamweight title by knocking out Cody Garbrandt with four minutes and ten seconds uh, in round number one. In devastating fashion. Devastating. Yes. Hey, so let's, let's talk to Nostradamus of the MMA world. See, what had happened was <laughs> there was something in Cody's eye. And so he yeah, couldn't it's see called it. TJ's <laughs> fist. <laughs> but, but for the record, can we acknowledge that there was nothing technical about it? This was too I'm going to disagree with you totally. Disagree. Man, as a striker, that was. Come on. And for those I did radio, see I Cody load up yeah. one punch. <laughs> but. The head movement throughout that fight, right, the so footwork. was probably a lot more technical. I'll give you that. Right. Cody I, looked like I trash. think Cody even some uh, – Co- no, I, don't, I don't agree. Right, Cody got enough. caught, but I think it was very technical. I think there was a lot of there emotion. There was that one wind-up, yes. There was a lot of emotion, and Cody really should have stepped back on some of this. Like, I don't disagree there. Right better. Do Cody, better. I'm not sure who the the striking coach is at Alpha Male now. But fire. I can tell you who it's not. (laughs) It's not Dwayne Ludwig. Dwayne Bang Ludwig. (laughs) They need to hire Dwayne back. Yeah. That's that's pretty awesome. All right, so it was a great night of fights. You know, we had you know some surprises. We saw Trailblazer for the very first time. We saw JJ Aldrich. We saw we saw Cub Swanson get put out by Boy Cano, a new champion in the, at the Henry the, Cejudo. Henry Cejudo and Dillashaw. Any final words? I'm really waiting for October 6th. October like, 6th. I hear the bees buzzing right now. Conor McGregor versus Khabib Nurmagomedov. Can we get some uh, some on-air me. predictions right now, no, JC? I'm no, I'm not doing any predictions. <laughs> no. I but, predict that Connor will throw another buggy and not fight. Let me let me let me just say this: for the Khabib and Connor fight, rule number one. Rule number one. That's all I gotta say. You listen to the show, you know what rule number one is. Don't leave it in the hand. Never trust a fart. Okay, <laughs> y'all don't listen to the show clearly. <laughs> don't listen. Don't leave it in the hands of the judges. No, that's not rule number one. What's rule number one? I'll tell you rule number one off the air. All right, this is Ryan Smith. For Combat Sports Talk, thank you so much for listening, and we will catch you next time. Thank you to G Money, George Stallworth, and KC D's on Yabuchi. I will catch you later. All right, bye-bye.